Hi there, welcome to part one of a two-part series of making vodka with baker's yeast. And uh, part one is going to be dealing with putting together the wash. Part two will be the distillation of the, of the wash. So let's get into this. These are the basic ingredients that you're going to need to make yourself a reasonably good sugar wash, a simple wash that you use for distillation of uh, ethyl alcohol. You've got your sugar. And in this case here, I've got five kilos of sugar. I happen to know that four kilos of sugar will give me an 8% alcohol by volume end product. But I want to try and bump that up to 10%. So I'm gonna put five kilos of sugar in. Now, when you add more sugar, Yes, you can get it up to 10% alcohol by volume, but it starts to slow down. It's distillation process, it'll start off fast and it'll get slower and slower and slower. So that means to get that extra little bit of alcohol, it's be expectant of another day or two in the distillation process. But keep in mind too also, you don't want to go over 10% alcohol by volume because when, it, let's say for example, we put twice as much sugar in as I have here. No, you don't actually double the amount of alcohol by volume because we're using baker's yeast, you're going to reach around about 10% max and then the alcohol will actually kill or stop the baker's yeast from working. So it's important to keep it at a maximum of around about 10% alcohol by volume. Other ingredients. We have sanitizer. We have uh, this particular uh, sanitizer, phosphoric sanitizer. You use this in here, uh, in, your, in your distillation bin, a little drop and some water and uh, it bubbles up, that sanitizes it. Then you can either just pour it out. I give it a little bit of a rinse as well. But I also use it in this spray bottle uh, in a dilutive form so I can spray the equipment that I use to actually uh, make the wash. It's important to have that. You want to keep the whole thing reasonably sanitized because it's just like a big petri dish. You don't want any bacteria getting in there because it's going to grow in the yeast environment. A, uh, this is a, an airlock. This is very handy. It keeps out foreign bodies because you put this in the top of the, bot uh, of the distillation uh, uh, container and it keeps, as I said, uh, the, uh, the foreign bodies out. Very important. Diammonium phosphate, DAP. This is quite interesting. When I first got into making my own alcohol, um, I was using turbo yeast. Yes, that serves a purpose. You need to do a fair bit of uh, carbon cleaning and carbon filtering to get the turbo yeast to a, a palatable condition. But I used to then start experimenting with baker's yeast and uh, I thought, well, I do need to have a yeast nutrient. So you don't just put yeast, sugar, and water together. That's going to fall flat on its face very quickly. So I went to the internet and I found uh, baker's yeast, or I found yeast nutrient. This cost me $3.50. A tiny little thing, it's about uh, 50 grams, it's tiny, uh, $3.50. And uh, that's what I was using to actually uh, give my yeast that little bit of nutrient. I did some research and found out that um, uh, a lot of the winemakers and uh, the beer makers, on a professional level, they use a thing called DAP, diammonium phosphate, which is this stuff here. So I did some further research, right, and I found out that I can actually buy this for $7 a kilo. <laughs> this is a yeast nutrient. So um, I'll put the link in the description below, but uh, very, very good. We only need a teaspoonful of this per uh, 25 litres, so <laughs> very good. It's going to give you quite a vigorous start uh, to your, your baker's yeast. Other things we have here, citric acid. This is very useful. Uh, we use it in the distillation or the, in, in the, uh, the wash here to, that, to lower the pH level. Now I happen to know our, my pH level here in this house is actually around about six or seven. Ideally you want about four or five and you assess that by using either a simple pH litmus paper or you can get a special pH filter uh, kit and test that yourself. It's cheaper on the internet around about uh, 50 cents for that. But uh, make it around about four or five pH level, and you use basically a teaspoonful of citric acid to do that. Uh, another actual great use for this is using it to clean out your column. And I've got a separate video which shows you how to do that. So feel free to have a look at that. Another thing here, magnesium sulfate or Epsom salts. Very, very interesting product. Uh, we use that to soften the water. And uh, to soften the water, basically, if it's hard water, uh, you need to have an awful lot. An old estate, for example, again, uh, you need to put in some magnesium sulfate to soften the water to make it easier for the whole thing to work. 
put a pinch of that in only, a tiny little pinch. You'll see me do that later on. That's all you need of that. Yeast, baker's yeast. This is a simple baker's yeast from the, the local food store and it's very affordable, about $4.50 for that. So um, it's very affordable. And I'll be using a half cup in this wash. And uh, this is actually just a container to actually uh, activate the yeast. So later on, I'll put some warm water, some sugar and yeast in there and wait for it to start growing before I add it to the, to the um, distillation chamber. Thermometer, very important, because what you want to do is you want to regulate the temperature of the water going into uh, the, the barrel here. Because uh, when you have the finished product up here, your water, you want it to be no hotter than 30, 32 degrees. Uh, any hotter is going to destroy or kill the yeast or any colder and the yeast will remain dormant. So you want about 32 degrees, 32 degrees. We have um, an incredible, interesting tool here. Now, this is going to allow you to uh, monitor uh, the strength of what you're doing. Uh, it measures a specific gravity. Uh, it's a hydrometer. And you can actually measure the, the density of this when you are growing. Remember how before I said I want to have 10% uh, alcohol by volume. Well, I worked it out. If I knew four kilos uh, of sugar gives me 1,060 specific gravity, and that's 8% alcohol by volume. Uh, I want to get 10% alcohol by volume. That's 1,075 specific gravity, and that relates to around about five kilos. So you can do the math. It's important to use that. So you don't want to, if you're doing, doing a baker's yeast brew, you don't want to have it any stronger than 1,075. That's 10% alcohol by volume, and it shows you it on here, what that is. So um, very interesting tool and uh, hydrometer, most necessary for that to happen. Let's start putting this all together now. All right, I've already got some water inside the barrel here. It should be around about 30, 32 degrees. And I'll double check that to make sure. Actually, it might be a bit warmer than that, but um, we've got that up to 32.5, about 33 degrees, that's good. That's um, a good temperature to have it at. So we can start putting the sugar in. And uh, that's going to get the whole ball game going. So you start the whole thing going. Pour all your sugar in. We're only putting five kilos in, remember. I'll give reference to uh, where we actually got this recipe from. Now, there's a fellow by the name of Wino. <laughs> it's an appropriate name for a guy, but uh, he actually is a contributor to a forum uh, called the Home Distillers Forum. And he put a recipe together, and it's called the Wino's Plain Old Sugar Wash. And uh, the recipe for his version is, uh, I'll actually, I'll put the link in the description below. But the interesting point about it is that um, I've been doing exactly the same as his recipe. Now, his recipe calls for uh, only um, uh, four kilos of sugar. I'm using five. That's the only thing different. But apart from all that, I'll give you reference. You can have a look at that. And it's very worthwhile actually having a look at that for him. Very interesting for uh, finding out some of the uh, little secrets about doing stuff. And um, I found a lot. I could learn a lot from that. So anyway, the sugar's in. Now, time to put the other ingredients in. I've got uh, the Epsom salts. So I only want a small pinch of that, remember? So uh, it's just a pinch. That's it. That uh, softens the water a bit. We've got the uh, citric acid for lowering the pH. So one teaspoon of that. That's fine. We've then got um, the DAP, the diammonium phosphate. Get over how useful this is. Actually, it activates the uh, um, up the yeast and it actually helps it to go quite vigorously from a very early stage. So you've got one teaspoon of diammonium phosphate uh, in that as well. Now, all we do is simply stir the whole thing up. And we keep on stirring until it's pretty well mixed. So... Um, I'll cut back to this when I've actually had it all dissolved and I've actually filled it up with uh, all the water necessary and I've got the yeast ready. Well, we're back. Uh, I've got the container filled with sufficient water for the, the distillation to take place. I've got the next stage ready here. This is basically where we're going to put together the yeast and some sugar to activate the yeast and then put it into this container. I've also got my pH 
litmus paper to test the pH level prior to it, just to verify that it is in the, the range that I want, which is going to be four to five. So um, first thing we do, while this is, yeast is activating, I'll, I'll finish stirring the, the bucket to make sure all the sugar is dissolved. I'll put a bit more sugar into this bowl here, this jar. This is just to activate the yeast. For no other purpose, it's just to give the yeast some food so it can start bubbling and start going. And when it's activated, then we put it in here. Right, so uh, I've got a half cup measure. I'm just pouring in my baker's yeast. Doesn't need to be exact, but now close enough is good enough. There's a half a cup of baker's yeast there. And uh, now I'm going to actually just start mixing it in the uh, jug I have here. And mix it slowly. Make sure the yeast is actually at room temperature too. Uh, I, I store it uh, in the fridge normally. Uh, so if you're going to use it, make sure it's at a room temperature before you start mixing it. And uh, it's gonna help it to activate a lot faster. I think we'll cut back to uh, this when I'm getting closer towards having all the yeast in. Well, the last bit of yeast is going in now. And it's pretty well mixed. If you don't mix this as you pour the yeast in, since you've got half a cup, it's gonna completely clog up everything and you won't be able to get a good mixture in there. So I've got um, half a cup of yeast in there and it's a happy little Vegemite. And it's a nice even consistency there, which is good. So um, now that's perfect, All right? That's evenly, that's evenly made. And I'm um, going to use this again to actually help disperse it in the top of the barrel. Now, while this is actually activating, it'll start increasing in size. You'll see this as time goes by. And when we come back, I'll have another camera and I'll take a shot from the side on this so you can see how active this yeast is. So right now, while I'm waiting for this to actually activate, I'm going to finish stirring my sugar wash to make sure all the sugar and the other ingredients are dissolved. Getting close to the top of the container there, see? So what I'll do now is I'll finish off my preparations to make sure everything else is ready. Um, final step, I'll check the pH level. And give it a second or two, that's good. It's got a pH level roughly around about five, which is really, it's realistically it's where I want it. Okay, so that's fine, that's ready. Um, we've now got a very active yeast container here and it's going to be time to actually start adding a yeast to the sugar wash, the final stages of the preparation. All right, so um, that's very good. It's happy, it's, it's, it's activated and it's going to do a wonderful job. So now all we do is we start pouring it in to the sugar wash. And you've got a, a rich foam which is going to be on the top. So what we need to do now is to so, sort of get that foam mixed in with the, um, the rest of the wash inside there. So just scrape as much out of the container as you possibly can. So um, that's good. Actually what I'll do while I'm doing this, I'll take a phone, uh, film of this as well. So um, at least you can see what's happening. So you can see here, there's a, a rich foam. And you can sort of see that you, some of the liquid down there, see it's mixing with it. So the idea is step one, mix the foam in with the fluid. And step two, after you've done that, use the, sp the plastic spoon to mix it from the bottom up. So, um, that's going to give you your preparation necessary for this to happen. So um, that's pretty good. I'm quite happy with that at the moment. So that's finished. Don't need that again. The stirring spoon. Stir that up until you're completely happy that uh, it's an even consistency all the way through. I'm happy with that. So now we have got this baby nearly ready for the, um, the final stage. This is where you put it to bed for a while. Okay, so we've got the lid. We're gonna put that lid on, make sure it's nice and tightly put on so it's airtight. 
And um, speaking of airtight, we've got an air lock that we're going to use here. Excuse me while I go out of frame just to put some water in. All right, so we've got the air lock in place. Hey, we've got the air lock and now we're gonna put it in place. Now the waiting game comes upon us. It's about 30, 32 degrees in there. We wanna try and maintain that at 30, 32 degrees. So when I put it to bed later on in the laundry, I'm gonna have a strap around it and that's going to help keep that heat there. If you put the strap up higher, it maintains a lower heat. Put it down lower, it maintains a high heat. So you'll learn this as time goes by. So I'm going to cut for now. Uh, I'm gonna come back in probably about half an hour's time when this starts to bubble and uh, I'll see if I can capture that for you. It's just about 35 minutes past uh, when I actually finished this, putting this barrel together and it's just started bubbling. Now let's just see if I can catch it, hey? There she blows. There'd be alcohol in that there barrel there be. You'll notice that I've also got a, um, a heater strip down here. Now this heater strip is going to help to keep it nice and warm on these cold wintry nights. I've also just picked up some thermometer strips. Now these thermometer strips are very handy. Now you can use your, your uh, digital thermometer all the time, but at a quick glance, these thermometer strips are gonna be able to help you to keep it in the right temperature. Remember, we're aiming between 30 and 32 degrees um, for uh, the overall temperature of this as it goes along. So um, now I'm going to put it to bed in the laundry and uh, in about three, maybe four days time, it's probably going to be stopped bubbling completely. Now it starts bubbling fast, it'll get faster than this, but then it'll get slower and slower and slower and slower. So in about three or four days time, it'll be time to think about um, now racking it, basically uh, siphoning off all of the uh, liquid, leaving the sediment behind, and then putting in something to help separate it even further until we end up with a clear liquid. Yeah, so um, there we go. Part two, the distilling, um, that's coming up.